Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And uh, we're just seeing a relatively quiet open um, overnight. Um, had some problems with TradingView last night. Uh, they actually didn't show quotes for pretty much the entire session. I guess they came on now, so uh, uh, I was pretty upset with that. I didn't. Even, I was thinking it was because of New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Um, Although I was seeing futures quotes, but I was just thinking that maybe there was going to be a late start or something like that. But I then later saw the uh, cable come off quite a bit um, after that and then uh, switched to another uh, service. So I think I'll probably be just moving on to, uh, to Ninja and not be using TradingView anymore because of all the issues we've had or I've had with this, this uh, program. Um, that being said... Um, as I said, uh, looks like a relatively quiet start. Uh, we did go in and see uh, cable come off, and as I mentioned, uh, um, there was actually a great opportunity. I mean, um, you can see here that during the um, the session, uh, we had actually came off quite a bit uh, from that window. When the uh, uh, pair had opened up, we had a, a – sign actually showing it here on um, – I'm looking right here. Um, yes, yeah, shown here. I've, actually, if you go into, I'll pull it up in Ninja and go with the futures. Bear with me. Now here's a cable. Um, on the but it's on uh, on the futures, and you can see here uh, when we opened up, uh, we actually rallied up. You can see here, uh, we actually rallied up here. And this on a five minute chart made up to almost about what thirty two. Now, now that's on the futures, but I'm saying is we rallied up and then we saw this market really sell off quite a bit. It actually came off came came down at the time um, the. Um, uh, cash was down to, I think, got down to around 32, 32.05 or something like that. As I mentioned, trading view is not showing the actual, uh, let me see here, it's not actually showing, uh, appears that, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with trading view. I mean, it's not showing what, but as I mentioned here, this is at, um, at around uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, uh, maybe a little bit later than that, actually it's at 8.30 Eastern. And you can see the market moves up and then we come off quite a bit, come off uh, about 50, more than 50 uh, uh, pips, uh, but you're not seeing that reflected in, uh, in trading view. Anyway, um, I'm just going to smooth this over here. Some more app to go in and probably use. Um, I should just use uh, TD Ameritrade actually, so we can have what the actual trading was. Because, like I said, there's that um, area where the market wasn't even trading. You can see here, actually, as if the market already had paired back, and that was not the case. So, um, but anyway, that being said, we're going in uh, take a look at the um, economic data. So bear with me. Okay, we did go in and get uh, finals on uh, PMIs. Uh, Spanish manufacturing PMI came in at 47.4, looking for 47. Um, Italian uh, PMI came in at 46.2, they're looking for 47. Uh, so just a touch bit weaker. And uh, German 
came in just a bit stronger at 43.7, but still in contractionary mode here. So um, still problems with the German uh, economy. And then the overall Eurozone market PMI came in at 46.3. As we come into today, um, let's see, we're going to have uh, challenger layoffs with initial jobless claims. And we do have Canadian PMI, market PMI. And we do have uh, ISM manufacturing PMI today. We did get the cakes in um, overnight. That came in at 51.5. They were actually, they came in a little bit weaker than they expected. They were looking for 51.8 and they got a 51.5. with me. Okay, let's just go on and go into the news. I was going to pull up another chart to actually show, get an idea of what, how the, the markets were actually trading. Uh, hang on. Well, let's just go and move into the news. As uh, like as I mentioned, uh, the um, yeah, we're not actually showing any uh, trading view until after midnight Central Standard Time, and uh, it's not reflecting what, what how the market actually traded. Uh, when we were open, as I mentioned, the market, uh, you can see it here on a five minute chart when we saw the cable come off. And basically, this is what the what, what trading view is showing as of midnight, uh, our time, as opposed to the move that we saw when we sold off. Um, we're going in, uh, I'll pull in the news. So New Year's blues for the uh, bonds with German yields at seven-month highs, uh, which would be supportive a bit for the euro. Uh, German 10-year bond yield um, uh, rose to a seven-month high on Thursday as optimism over U.S.-China trade relations uh, fueled hopes of a brighter outlook for the world economy and denied safe haven assets at the start of the new year. Uh, investor sentiment was boosted by this, along with a decision by China's central bank on Wednesday to cut the amount of cash that all the banks hold as reserves. Uh, French, German, and Dutch 10-year bond yields also rose two to three basis points. In Germany, the Eurozone's benchmark bond issuer, the 10-year bond yields, or bonds, as she said, rose to 0.157%. Uh, Two-year German yields barely touched their highest uh, since last April at negative 0.57%. The yield on the German 15-year bond uh, briefly touched 0 0.001. Uh, and let's go on in. Um, relatively quiet as far as any news coming out. And we're going with the dollar.
dollar off to a flat start for 2020 as others find the fizz. The dollar started the new year where it left off uh, the old one on the back of foot as investors wagered U.S. economic outperformance might be drawn to a close as optimism on trade brightens the outlook to, for growth globally. Signs of progress in the Sino U.S. trade dispute undermine the dollar for much of December, leaving its index down 1.9% on the month. It was uh, up just a fraction at 96.54, uh, having touched a six-month trough ahead of the holidays. The dollar eased further on Chinese yuan after shredding uh, 1% last month. A more encouraging global growth outlook and flush dollar liquidity conditions are undermining the dollar. Specifically, global fiscal monetary policy settings will remain accommodative in 2020, and China's growth slowdown is stabilizing. China's central bank on Wednesday cut the amount of cash the banks must hold its reserves, releasing around 800 billion won. Survey of Chinese manufacturing on Thursday showed activity was expanding to December while confidence shot higher as trade tensions ease. The dollar had benefited from U.S. economic outperformance for much of 2019, but an easing in Sino U.S. trade concerns has boosted the optimism that this could favor other major nations. While activity was light on Thursday, traders were on watch for any report of uh, last January's flash crash when the massive stop loss selling swept through an illiquid holiday uh, hit market. There are fears uh, the same could happen this week with Tokyo off and Jap uh, uh, Japanese retail investors again heavily short of yen, along with a risky sky high yielding currencies, including the Turkish lira and South African rand. For liquidity reasons, these positions are usually legged through the U.S. dollar, selling yen for dollars and dollars for lira. So any massive unwinding rolls more than just yen crosses. Yet unlike last year, authorities are on alert with Financial Futures Association of Japan warning against wild moves. Yeah, one moment. I thought I had saved the one with all the charts, and apparently I didn't. Um, I didn't bring up any of the charts that I wanted, so bear with me. Okay, this is what I was showing here. Um, because even though I'm to do the analysis, we've got these areas where, as I mentioned here, looking at the um, at the cable. You can see here, this whole area is missing here. And that's why when I do the analysis, it's showing as if we had um, had just jumped all the way down here. That's not the case. Um, let me go on and um, we'll go and start the analysis. Hang on. And I'll use these on the side.
as I mentioned, um, trading view is only showing the trading activity as of midnight and not showing anything that happened during the Asian session and uh, for analysis, I need to go and show that, so hang on. So let's go and move into the euro dollar. Okay, so we were uh, we had a resistance uh, coming to uh, the last day of the year, twelve thirty six. We did get to the twelve thirty six, um, which was a thirty eight percent of the full retracement move of eight seventy nine to eighteen uh, fourteen, and this confluence here with this uh, weekly right here at twelve thirty two. The resistance is really going to you know basically we're still looking at the same thing. We did come up here to twelve forty. Um, I'm not sure how much we're going to go and move today because it's still going to be relatively light trading. Um, so we're still going to go on and keep the 1236. We'll go and retain the 1236. On the downside, um, Mm. It's going to be right there, 1173, 1173 for support. And let's go and move into the cable. So now there's a disparity here because, like I said, trading view is not showing any of the, the, the trading during the Asian session. And uh, we'd actually. There we go. So when we're looking into where, where we can potentially go and rally to. I'm going to be looking for potentially back here to 3244. Move this all the way. Go to the daily. And for support on the way back, there's actually the uh, 3195, 3192 comes in actually a 50% pullback. Of the most recent pullback here, which was there.
There we go. Thirty-two even to thirty-eight percent. I think I was looking at off this last one because, like I said, I was looking at it on a very short-term basis. But if you look at the most from this most recent pullback, I mean, we've rallied so far. It's going to take a while, but uh, when I look, we actually there's some good support coming in right there at thirty-one ninety-two. So we're going to use that for our support on the pullback, at least initially. And let's go on moving now to the uh, Aussie dollar. We did go on to meet an area that we've been looking for since the beginning of the week, which was uh, this 7027, which is a key weekly, uh, but also confluences with the 7032, which is a 50%. This is actually going to go on and keep this right there as our uh, bias chart resistance, which is going to be 7027. That's going to go and remain the same. And on the pullback, At least for today, um, we're just going to be looking for a pullback to 69.65. And we'll see how things, as I mentioned, it's going to still be relatively light trading, but uh, we'll go with 69.65. And with that, let's go and move into the Kiwi. Now the Kiwi, um, we actually had 67.34 and we had actually, uh, the market had struggled a bit in that area, but we made one more last gasp, uh, push higher. Now in order for this market to extend another leg, it was gonna have to go in and close, actually close above 67.62. It came up a bit short and we're actually lower than the 67.34 for right now. Uh, we'll go and take a look at intraday basis. You can see that key 6734. I think that's still going to hold, but if we were to be able to get beyond that, it's going to be 6743. 
And on the downside, Once again, not expecting a whole lot of movement. It's going to be a little bit tighter. Um, we'll just be looking for a move down here to 66.93. And that's for today. Now we have gone to continue to see the dollar CAD move lower. At, uh, we were looking since the beginning of the week for an overall move to 29, but um, we were expecting a pause around this 30.29. The market actually held a couple of days back at around 30.52, or 30.52 I think it was, we had our bias chart support and it held. And I thought the next day they probably wouldn't go too much further beyond than the 30.29. Well, they actually blew right through that. And they're on their way, well on their way with the move to 29.02. When you think about how crude has, uh, you know, gone above the, we have paired back, but it had moved, you know, actually above the $62 level. And then we've seen, you know, gold uh, make quite the run. So we're potentially, we still have this move down here. Uh, that I think we'll make it down to 2902, but we're a bit overdone here. Um, you can see there is some support coming here and here. Um, a little bit right there comes in, and we're going to go with that for 29.56. Actually, we actually already came as low as appears to be 29.52. So we'll go with 29.56. Looking for that area to hold, at least for now. And on the upside, it's going to be, uh, looks like. 30 even, but hold on. Let's... Yeah, it's going to be that uh, 3001. Let's go move into the peso. Now, on the last day of the year, actually, we were just seeing really more, a little bit of short covering, I believe, than anything else. The peso has really been you know, bludgeoned, quite, bludgeoned quite a bit, and um, really no changes on here in the sense that um, it's going to be 1875, and we saw this market after the little bit of um, short covering start to ease back again. And we're going to actually make the resistance here at 1898. And looking here with the dollar yen. We did come off quite a bit now. The the thing is, we've actually got the S and P's that um, let's come back here. Almost at all time highs again. We're at thirty two forty eight right now. Um, now the dollar yen has been. Um, 
and really mostly young pairs, but the Dolly Yen has been under pressure um, and breaking past this 927. We had, when we had done the analysis, we were saying two consecutive days below 927 would be looking for a move to 832. Um, we just about did it on the second day after it broke almost. Uh, but um, because of the flash crash that we had uh, last year, um, and we've run into the same thing with the Japanese holiday, the market was susceptible to a pullback. So we did see that pullback. That being said, generally with the market, whenever you, everybody's looking for something to happen, it doesn't happen. So we probably may have run the course for what we've, we've run the course for, especially now with S&Ps uh, almost right at the all-time highs. Probably milk this move at least for today as as much as it will go. It would appear, so we're going to just go with the buy chart support there. Eighteen uh, eight fifty four, eight fifty four will be the support. And on the upside, you're right there, nine oh six. And let's go move into the dollar index. Take a look. We've already seen this slide down here in the cash doll index, and we're looking for an overall move to actually uh, not only get to 9601, but take out 9601. We're looking for a move actually to 9582, which would be the 161% of this recent failed rally. That'd be 161%, and that would also nicely overshoot this 9601. Um, so I think we're still susceptible to that move. I don't think necessarily anything's going to happen today uh, because once again, uh, light trading overall, we've already sustained the move. I'm thinking that today's going to be relatively light. So on the upside, we're going to be looking for right there, 96, let's just call it And on the downside, 96.32, that's going to remain the same, 96.32. Although likely, I doubt we're going to make it down there, at least not for today. And let me go on and... Let's go and take a look here with the Kiwi in. We're still holding up here relatively well. And you can see here it's been a 
nothing short of a fantastic run here over the last three and a half weeks. Resistance is going to come in, it looks right there, 73.34, right? Actually, 73.35. We'll take a look at it on a shorter term basis. Yeah, right there, 73.35 on the upside. So that's what we already have from before. And we're looking potentially for a move down to 72.83. That's, that's going to stay the same, 72.83 right here, which would be just a bit below. This trend line here. So I like that move. That would should go and hold the market, at least for now. Like I said, it's still relatively quiet trading. 72.83, but we shall see. Let's go and take a look at the Euro Yen. Holding here rather tight here. As I mentioned, I think most of Haral is already um, over here on the uh, yen pairs, especially with the spoos uh, right here at all time highs or just about all time highs. Um, this look for the flash crash and with everybody on guard for that, although we did go in a slip, uh, you know, over the last couple of days, I don't see anything really translating or happening today here on this so on the looking on the lower end right there twenty two oh seven It's going to be right here at 22.25 for resistance. And support coming right there at 22. 65 or 2165. We'll move into the euro odd. Well, we're still going backwards and forwards on this uh, euro odd here against this 59.54. Remember, we had it before, 59.92, adjusted it here to reflect the most recent area that they may go to. Um, we've already made a dip down there uh, towards it. We made it at 59.62, and we're coming off that reasonably. And then we are, I think, we're starting to see the Aussie and the Kiwi pair back a bit. So I think we've done most of the the – Yeoman's work at that lower end. So the support, you can almost call it your risk level if you want to uh, take a long on that. It's going to be 59.75 right there. 59.75. We already had that before. Okay. And on the upside,
if we are able to get up there. Um, It'll be 6049, 6049. And we already had 6048, so we'll stay with that. And let's go move into the Euro Kiwi. Some good support coming in here, and as I mentioned, we're starting to see the antipodean currencies uh, pull back. Um, so I think that this whole area, and you can see we've got some nice uh, Fib confluences coming here. I like this area to hold right there, and same thing with the Euro Aussie. There's going to be a risk uh, level there if you're getting long. 66.32. And potential for this thing to move higher. Um, I'm resistance right there at 67 right now. Um, although I think we can move higher. Um, Let's go, I'm going to give it some room here, 67.36 for resistance. And let's go with the ASEAN. We do have the 61%, and was as I mentioned again, um, I think most of the, the hoopla is over on the CN pair with everybody looking for them all thinking that there's going to be a flash crash, which, you know, like I said, with the spoos at all time highs, doesn't seem likely. And then on top of that, we have NFP tomorrow. Um, I believe that'll be NFP tomorrow. I can just double check. Because the holiday, I don't think that would have pushed it, but we shall see. Let me take a look. Uh, maybe we're not. Maybe we don't have. Let's see. Hang on. Yep, it's not tomorrow. It's going to be the following Friday. But that's it. With that, once again, that being said, um, with um, with S&Ps at all-time highs uh, or just right there, doesn't seem like we're going to get a flash crash in this dollar yen, especially with everybody looking at it and everybody on guard for that. Uh, that being said, I think we've, you know, we've probably done what we could here with the Aussie yen. On the short-term basis, we'll go and take a look at it on a um, intraday. Go right there, 76. 34, 76.34. We already had 76.30. And 
And let's take a look at the guppy. You can see your shows here didn't start trading until midnight um, on trading view with a high of 43.88. But we show here that the actual high in Asian trading was here at 44.20. 4418. We'll go with 4405 right there, 4405. And on a pullback, forty three forty nine. And look at the stirring nod. Now the Aussie's already starting to pull back, so maybe we can get the starting to rally just a bit here. Uh, risk is going to be right there to eighty nine forty one. A bit of a stretch here. We'll actually split the hair and go with eighty nine thirty five. The actual high in the Asian session was 89.09, which once again, um, trading view is not showing that because it didn't have the Asian session. But we're thinking that they may be able to goose the stops a bit here. And then on the downside, Gonna go with eighty eight forty seven, eighty eight forty seven.
And you can see here they've got the um, spoos right back up here at all time highs again. At 3249, um, we're just a spit away from. Not right all time highs. And why I think that we're not going to see any kind of a replication of the flash crash here with uh, the yen pairs. Looking at gold, we did go on ease back a bit here from, um, as I mentioned here, that 61% here, which came in at uh, 15, um, apologize, right there, 1528. We're actually making a move back up here again after look like we had a little bit uh, to the close out the year, a bit of a, a little bit of a gravestone. Did you were pushing back here, looking at it from an intraday standpoint? Yeah, resistance comes in at 1525.60. Maybe just right there. 1525.80. There you go. So looking for 1525.80 here. Although, like I said, uh, Bit of a surprise. I mean, we're already right back up. Challenging here again. We did get um, thought the market might be susceptible to a little bit of a pullback. But it would need to uh, get above, and like I said, the resistance will be right there at fifteen twenty-five eighty. So about two dollar, two and a half dollars away if they want to push it. We back towards the lower sixty ones, but we had come to sixty two. But that being said, it's still been pretty good move here. Uh, from when we were in the 50s, henceforth, while we've had that you know pretty good little run here in the in the dollar cad to the downside. So that'll be it, and um, we'll see you later on in the chat room. Thanks for joining us here on uh, the new year with the European crossover webinar.